title of this uh, presentation is a brief paddle through river tagging because I'm kind of punny. And let's see, how do I advance slides? Sorry, I'm learning to do this uh, as we go. Okay, cool. So in the beginning, uh, mapping a river was pretty simple. You just drew a line along the water course and tagged it waterway river. And so this was a reasonable approximation for uh, narrow rivers, uh, but for a wide river, it didn't work really well, right? So mappers at the time said, aha, uh -huh, what we need to do is really map the river banks. And so that's what they did. This is like 2006 timeframe, right? So you drew one way on each side of the riverbank, you tagged it waterway riverbank. Now, this early uh, riverbank scheme from uh, 2006 allowed renderers to draw outlines on the banks of rivers, right? And uh, renderer style rule from that time showed that riverbank objects were actually uh, rendered as lines. So presumably it's kind of locked in history, presumably the inside uh, was covered with the natural water. But what we know from that time is that they did actually render uh, riverbank edges. So, in 2007, the uh, multi-polygon relation was invented, and by 2008, mappers decided that what they really wanted wasn't riverbanks at all, but rather river areas. So mappers started connecting the two riverbanks with ways uh, that crossed the river to create a multi-polygon that represented the water-covered area of the river. So this changed with both a step forward and a step backwards. So one of the recommendations from the large rivers proposal was to chop the river into sections so that the objects are more manageable if you have a really long river. So this caused a problem for renderers that wanted to render the uh, edges of the riverbanks as a border because at each spot where the two sections of river uh, joined up, an unsophisticated renderer would end up drawing an unwanted border across the river. So without the separate riverbank tagging, a renderer would have to pre-process adjacent areas in order to get around this problem. And that's why today uh, there's no casing on riverbanks in the cartel renderer. Now, fast forward a couple of years to 2011. And in that year, a Russian mapper invented a new key called water, which let mappers tag the type of water uh, represented by a natural water tag. So at that time, the riverbank tag actually covered both rivers and canals. And so the new water tag uh, actually lets you tag them as different types of objects. So land use reservoir became water reservoir. Land use pond was actually a thing, became water pond. And that whole list of water tags that we're familiar with today were born. So this change brought uh, an important feature, right? So now as a mapper, you could tag any water feature with natural water without first having to determine what type of water it is, such as a river, a lake, a pond, or a reservoir. Uh, furthermore, uh, as a renderer or a data consumer, you could search for all water features under the single tag natural water, right? Or at least that'll be true once uh, everybody adopts the new tag. So waterway riverbank is the old tag and water river is the new tag. So the proposal actually recommended dual tagging for a period of time in order to allow uh, data consumers and renderers time to catch up. Now today, 10 years later, all serious renderers do support both schemes. So at this point in OpenStreetMap history, uh, rivers are tagged with two objects. A waterway river runs down the middle of the river and a completely separate object is used to tag the water covered area. The name tag is applied uh, only to the waterway object and uh, that, that gives renderers a single feature to leave uh, use for uh, the labeling, right? So if you put the name tag on both the waterway and on the river area, you could end up with double tagging and that kind of looks silly. And so the standard is we just put it on the waterway and we leave it all off the, uh, the river area. All right. Okay, so a year later, a new proposal was approved, which added the waterway relation all right, so now we're in 2012. So this allowed for long rivers to be grouped together as a single object. Rivers thousands of miles long could now be represented with uh, one single object. And so on the screen, this is the Mississippi River relation, uh, which contains a whole bunch of waterway objects that are all each individually also labeled Mississippi River. And, and so now, uh, now you can do long rivers. 
Okay, so so here we are with the current scheme that we use today. You tag the river path with waterway river and name broken up into pieces as needed. You tag the river area with natural water and water river without a name broken into segments as needed. And if it's a long river, if it's a short river, you can ignore it. If it's a long river, you uh, make a waterway relation to group all the pieces together. <clears throat> now, when you're mapping a river, uh, what do you do if the river is uh, seasonal or uh, you know, changes height up and down over time or through the year? And so this imagery here shows where two different imagery collections were, were stitched together, if you look carefully. So the image on the left was captured during a time of high water and the image on the right was taken during the dry season. If you have both high water and low water imagery available, you can use the uh, intermittent tag on the parts of the river that are sometimes wet and sometimes dry. Now, what's more likely is that you have something that looks kind of like this, where you've got uh, like a narrow river that kind of runs through an area. And then there's this like bathtub ring effect that you get around the river where you can see where the, you know, the water comes up to normally. Um, so uh, in, in those cases, you can use the intermittent tag on the sections where you can kind of obviously see where the water goes. Um, and so if you use that style of tagging, what that looks like in Carto is this. And so in the middle, you've got the river that's there all the time. Uh, the label is rendered from the waterway that you've hopefully drawn through the middle of it. And then the intermittent parts have this kind of crush hashing um, effect here. And so it's interesting about this particular area. And so this is uh, the San Juan River. It's like in Southern Utah or so is you actually have, so it's actually so dry at times on the banks that there are track roads that run through the parts that are sometimes underwater. And so if you didn't tag the intermittent areas, what it would look like on the map is you have roads running through the river, which doesn't make any sense, uh, and which is what it looked like before I uh, went through and touched it, All right? So, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's do something a little crazy. So what if we wanted to micro map the different areas of exposed riverbed, right? So when the river goes away, uh, sometimes it's sand, sometimes it's beer rock or scree or gravel or what have you. Uh, so in that case, you can tag additional polygons to represent each of these micromapped areas uh, with the intermittent water polygon covering the whole shebang. All right, so let's look at what that looks like in the Carto style. So Carto is one of the few map styles that actually renders intermittent water in a way that allows the underlying land cover to show through. And so I first ran into this style of tagging in Norway and I found another example in Russia where this was done. And this technique is a little bit controversial for mappers I've talked to, uh, but it does actually work and you can do it and it will show like that. And by the way, this is actually uh, in the map at this location if you go to it. <clears throat> now, uh, this section of the San Juan River has areas of sand and bare rock uh, where I've indicated it there and mud as well. And then in the upper left, that's an area that I didn't cover any underlying um, land cover. And so it had that just sort of uh, blue hashed with background kind of look. Okay, so that's how you map rivers. And so I'd like to switch gears and talk a little bit about river modernization and, and what we've done with that. So in 2011, uh, when the water detail proposal was approved, there was virtually no usage of water river, uh, while there are almost 200,000 usages of waterway river bank. Now you might expect that uh, water river uh, would go up while water river bank would go down, but that's not what happened. So over the next five years, river kind of started out slowly and by about 2016 or so, they were sort of increasing at roughly the same rate, right? So mappers were adding water river about as much as they were adding water river bank. So by 2018, we hit the peak in waterway river bank. Um, and even at that point, the deprecated tag, which had been deprecated for eight years, still outnumbered its officially approved replacement by a seven to one ratio. 
and then something happened, this. Okay, in December of 2018, the developers of the ID editor suddenly became aware of this 2011 water detail proposal and implemented it. And so the ID editor added Waterway Riverbank to its list of deprecated tags, along with other deprecated water tags, such as Land Use Reservoir and Land Use Pond. That was my cat, great. Uh, this meant that anytime an ID user was editing an area with the Riverbank tag, the editor would prompt them with this message, would you like to upgrade tags? So this change, of course, had a dramatic effect on mapper behavior and tagging trends. And so over the next two years, this happened. River gained over 100,000 tags while Riverbank lost 80,000 tags. And it was at this point in time that an ad hoc group of us got together and started this river modernization project. So our goal was simple, upgrade tagging on the 27,000 remaining Riverbank tags in the United States, while at the same time fixing tagging and geometry issues on them. So first we documented our procedure on a wiki page and then we started discussing the project with uh, the local communities uh, in the US to make sure we had everyone's support. Uh, that was mostly done on Slack. So those of you that are on Slack are probably tired of hearing me talk about rivers. Um, and then with the community on board, it was time to fire up JASM and start editing. Okay, so step one was to first uh, look for missing rivers, okay, and so, there are, or there were, hopefully we've got most of them, obviously I missed this one that I found for the presentation. Uh, there were lots of rivers that were simply tagged as water river without additional river tagging and without waterway riverbank. And so you didn't know it was a river unless you sort of looked at it by the shape, right? And so what you do in Johnson is you have the option to uh, sparse load and overpass query. And so, uh, so the one I've got there will uh, pull down uh, areas of water that don't have a corresponding water tag. And then once you've got it in the editor, if the area is small, you can just kind of look and say, oh yeah, look, here's a river shaped thing. Let me tag it. Um, so if it's bigger, you need kind of some different techniques, right? So this worked pretty well with Alan uh, when I was doing some of the big square rectangle shapes, uh, states out west, uh, I had to do some different techniques, right? And so, there's this awesome JASM find dialog, which you should be familiar with if you've never used it before. It's pretty awesome. And so uh, here's a couple of queries you can use. And so this is a regular expression. So this says, give me any natural water that, that ends with river in the name. And so there's a bunch of imports that didn't add the river tagging, but did conveniently name them with such and such river. And so that was an easy way to find a bunch of them. Uh, so another thing you can do is look for reservoir or riverbank and tag those as reservoirs and riverbanks respectively. So that takes some more objects out of the view. And then so last one, this is kind of a holy grail. Uh, you can look for areas of water that are small and then purge them out of the view. And so because a river is typically very long, it actually adds up to quite a bit of uh, water covered area. And so by slowly increasing that area size, you can continually purge small objects out of your view until uh, you know, the river kind of emerge from the fuzz of blue on the screen, okay? So now that we've found all the missing rivers and tagged those, the next step is to uh, sparse load uh, all sorts of rivers, and that's rivers tagged the new way with Water River, and rivers tagged the old way with Waterway Riverbank, uh, along with every stream and river waterway, and load all that stuff into the editor at once, hit the validator button, and then see what errors pop out. And let me tell you, a lot of errors will pop out if you've never touched an area. And so here's an example of a typical uh, validation run. So duplicate nodes are pretty common, overlapping water features are pretty common. And so you just spend some time going through them and, and fixing them all. And uh, you know you start to develop little techniques uh, for doing that, but essentially that's the procedure. <clears throat> and then once we fixed all the issues, the last step is to convert the riverbank tags to river and the modernization is complete. So, Here's, uh, this is what the graph of river and riverbank looked like before we started the modernization project. 
And in just the last two and a half months, we've managed to modernize 75,000 rivers across the world, including 27,000 in the United States. And again, that's, that's certainly not just me, that's a group of taggers uh, here and, and overseas. <clears throat> so this is what the world map of riverbank tagging looks like today. The red dots represent places where the deprecated tagging still exists. And so this is a global effort. So we've shared these procedures with other mappers uh, from Europe and Australia, and they've launched uh, similar efforts in, in other places. And so that's why you see the splotches of, of gray in certain areas. So in addition to our progress in the map, so we've also contributed 11 JAWS and bug reports. And so when you fix the same error 100 times in a row, you start to notice where JAWS is missing things. And so of those 11, we've actually even gotten four of them fixed, which is awesome and has um, actually made some of the river fixing quite a bit easier. Uh, so I'd like to share with you some of the visualizations that mappers working on the project have created. So this map shows the split between river and riverbank tagging in every country in the world. So green means a higher percentage of river tagging and red means a higher percentage of river bank tagging. Right? So this is a simple metric and not necessarily a reflection of mapper intent in each country. Uh, so this kind of analysis is pretty skewed by uh, single imports. Now here's another visualization. So that same mapper created a pie chart showing where the remaining legacy riverbank tags exist in the world. So the Russia wedge should not be a surprise. Uh, so that country accounts for 14% of the remaining riverbank tags, but they also have 11% of the world's land area. So that's not crazy. Uh, however, France, which is the biggest wedge, has 0.37% of the world's land area, but 19% of the riverbank tags. And so you kind of ask, well, how can such a tiny country have so many tags? And if you guessed funky import, you're right. So it turns out in France, there's a massive import around 2011 that mapped every single stream, canal, and tiny little farmer's irrigation ditch, uh, no matter how insignificant, as a riverbank. And so here's a zoom in of one of those riverbank objects. So the width of these objects is less than the crown of a tree, if you kind of look at that, to so give a sense of, of what size we're talking about, right? And so what can we do with these objects? Uh, so more than likely, there's actually a legitimate stream there under the tree cover. So it turns out we've got a tag for that, water equals stream, which is no kidding, the tag that you use for the water covered area of a stream. And so uh, you can see where a bunch of those objects have been going. Okay, so there's nothing that builds a community better than having a project that everyone can actively participate in. So whether it's map editing, writing proposals, or sharing tips and tricks on how to analyze and manipulate the database, we're slowly building up a fairly vibrant community of mappers interested in tagging modernization. So we've been working together to reach out to local communities around the world and develop new techniques for finding and fixing problems uh, in the map at global scale. So we hope that Rivers is really just the first step in ongoing worldwide efforts to improve the database. Uh, so we encourage you to come join us. Uh, we mostly hang out at the OpenStreetMap World Discord server. Uh, channel is hashtag mapping projects. And uh, there's a link on the wiki on the Discord page. And so with that, that concludes my paddle through riverbank tagging. Over to you.